Hello and welcome to FOCUS, a program produced by the Department of Disaster Management. I'm your host, Information and Education Manager Philomena Robertson, and in this edition we focus on the subject of smart hospitals, that is, hospitals which are safe and green. There is an ongoing global effort to raise the profile of the environment, and global warming and climate change have become key watchwords not just among environmentalists, but among other stakeholders who are cognizant of the importance of the environment and the need to protect it and reduce the impact of degradation. The emission of greenhouse gases is one of the key contributors to global warming. Health facilities, by virtue of their 24-hour operation, are one of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. They also utilize vast amounts of resources, particularly water and energy. Although the level of greenhouse gas emissions in the Caribbean is minimal when compared to the industrialized world, the region will not be spared the effects of climate change. It is therefore important that we think seriously about climate change adaptation strategies and minimizing our impact on the environment. The Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, is one of the agencies spearheading the move towards greater environmental consciousness and increasing the resilience of health facilities, particularly in light of the ongoing threat they face from natural disasters, the intensity and frequency of which are likely to increase given the impact of climate change. PAHO recognizes the vulnerability of the health sector and the obvious need for health facilities to remain operational, especially in times of hazard impact. There is acknowledgement, too, that health facilities are huge consumers of natural resources. In 2011, PAHO designed a Smart Hospitals initiative, which has been piloted in St. Kitts and Nevis and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and which was geared towards creating facilities that combine disaster resilience and environmental friendliness to better serve patients and provide improved working conditions for healthcare workers. In 2013, PAHO sought the assistance of the Department of Disaster Management for the production of a video that explains the concept and the work that has been undertaken. Let's take a look. Hello, this is Georgetown Smart Hospital. How may I help you? Hello, is this the Georgetown Hospital? Yes, sir. This is the Georgetown Hospital. We have added the word smart to our name because we have undertaken work to make our facility safer for workers and patients and more environmentally friendly to reduce our impact on the local environment. That is indeed very smart. I'm happy to hear that. Congratulations. <laughs> The Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, has embarked on an initiative to make hospitals across the Caribbean smart. Hospitals in St. Kitts and St. Vincent have already been retrofitted as part of the PAHO project, which is funded by the United Kingdom's Department for International Development, DFID. The initiative follows and enhances the existing Safe Hospitals project, which advocates for hospitals to be built to ensure continued operation during disasters and that existing hospitals progressively improve their safety levels to facilitate such. An assessment of 38 hospitals in the English-speaking Caribbean illustrated weaknesses in both functional and structural issues such as risk of damage to roof, water and gas supplies, factors which increased their vulnerability. The assessment unearthed a widespread need to undertake measures to reduce losses. In fact, 18% of the hospitals required urgent measures to protect the lives of patients and staff. What is a smart hospital? The term SMART refers to a combination of safe and green intervention strategies that result in hospitals being more resilient, 
while at the same time mitigating their impact on the environment and reducing the level of pollution. Hospitals can therefore be described as smart when they link their structural and operational safety with green interventions at a reasonable cost-to-benefit ratio. A smart hospital is a climate-smart, disaster-resilient facility that successfully balances safety and environmental friendliness. This balance is achieved by undertaking interventions that reduce the vulnerability of the facility to natural hazards and the potential impact of climate change, while at the same time reducing its carbon footprint. There are several ways to achieve or create a smart hospital. Improve the structural safety of the facility. Reduce energy and water use. Boost energy security with low carbon renewable resources. Improve air quality and reduce harmful emissions. Strengthen disease surveillance and control. Equip structures with efficient and environmentally friendly appliances and fixtures. Utilize eco-friendly flooring, paints, furniture and furnishings. Recycle paper. Generate less and properly dispose of solid and other waste and pharmaceuticals. Use environmentally benign chemicals. The Georgetown Hospital in St. Vincent and the Grenadines was retrofitted over a four-month period starting in October 2013. This hospital, located on the windward side of the island in the parish of Charlotte, is a 25-bed facility built in the 1980s which serves a population of 9,800 persons. An initial assessment of the hospital revealed its dilapidated state and the resulting negative impact on the quality of health service provided. The leaking roof was susceptible to storm and hurricane force winds, there was no water storage or harvesting systems available, and plumbing and energy systems were outdated and faulty, leading to energy losses and increases in operating cost. Additionally, there was no emergency power supply. The retrofitting works at the Georgetown Hospital kicked off with a town hall meeting that was attended by many residents from the surrounding communities. There was minimum disruption to the facility during the retrofitting. By the end of the project, the changes to the hospital were clearly visible and at the opening for the new facility, Residents and officials were able to witness the photovoltaic system affixed to the roof of the hospital, which will allow for the use of solar energy. The changes to the plumbing and electrical systems, fittings and fixtures, the enhanced physical and safe access to the hospital, and the rainwater harvesting systems. Overall, the general working conditions for staff at the hospital have improved significantly and patients now receive care in an environment more conducive to their convalescence. The reaction of officials and residents exudes a newfound appreciation for the need to connect climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction measures in critical facilities such as hospitals. Why do we need smart hospitals? Given the vulnerability of Caribbean islands to hazards such as earthquakes and hurricanes, there is an underlying susceptibility of healthcare facilities which are quite vulnerable to the impact of natural disasters. Mitigation is therefore a critical element in reducing this level of vulnerability. The Smart Hospitals project offers an integrated approach to building and retrofitting hospitals to ensure that they are both environmentally friendly and disaster resilient. Smarting hospitals will help to ensure that the facilities protect the lives of patients and health workers, reduce damage to the hospital infrastructure and the surrounding environment, 
continue to function as part of the health network, providing services under emergency conditions to those affected by disasters. Use scarce resources more efficiently, thereby generating cost savings. Improve strategies to adjust to and better cope with future hazards and climate change. The PAHO Smart Hospitals Initiative includes the development of a toolkit which serves as a comprehensive guide for achieving the requisite balance between safety and an environmentally friendly setting. Several climate smart and safety standards designed to reduce vulnerability are incorporated into the toolkit. Among the sections included in the toolkit are the Hospital Safety Index, which is a tool used to help gauge the overall safety of the healthcare facility and determine the likelihood of it continuing to function in emergency situations based on structural, non-structural and functional factors. The baseline assessment tool is designed to provide guidance on interventions that would lower cost through reduced consumption, energy and water savings, increased efficiency in the use of resources, the creation of favorable working conditions, and the education of users about the value of caring for the environment. The third section of the toolkit comprises a green checklist which is designed to work in tandem with the hospital safety index. It provides a list of improvements that can be made to the daily operations of hospitals to minimize the potential impact of climate change such as reducing carbon emissions and increasing efficiency in operations. The smarting of any healthcare facility is considered after a detailed assessment of the facility with specific attention being paid to its roof and the ability to withstand the additional weight of solar panels and the water heater and the size of its catchment population, the number of beds and the structural condition and mechanical integrity of the building among other areas. The Pogson Hospital in St. Kitts and Nevis located on the western side of the island in the village of Sandy Point is the other beneficiary of the Pajo Smart Hospitals Initiative. Located in the second largest town, the reconstructed facility consists of a 12-bed unit inclusive of labor and delivery suites and a health center. The works on this facility were much different from St. Vincent. The facility was chosen to demonstrate how small changes to a new and fully operational facility can make it more efficient, safe and environmentally friendly. The retrofitting works included the installation of emergency access and safety doors, improved fire safety and egress, as well as upgrades to the handicap accessibility, the establishment of a water harvesting system, installation of energy efficient devices including solar water heaters, air conditioning units and light fixtures, upgrades to the existing fire alarm systems and devices, upgrade of the security system, and overhaul of the emergency backup power unit and the upgrade of plumbing fixtures and electrical systems. The ultimate objective of the SMART concept is to ensure that healthcare facilities are safe and green and can continue to operate in a disaster scenario. In a world that is increasingly witnessing the impact of climate change and with the Caribbean islands being particularly vulnerable to hazards, don't you want your hospital to be a smart hospital? Wouldn't you want your hospital to provide benefits similar to what the Georgetown and Pogson Smart Hospitals are now providing for their workers and patients? Benefits such as reduced greenhouse gas emissions, reduced electricity and water bills, improved air quality, enhanced physical access to the hospitals, harvesting of rainwater, higher levels of comfort for patients, improved safety conditions, greater awareness of climate change and the need for environmentally safe operations. 
Take pride in knowing that your hospital is a smart hospital. The PAHO video was first shared with participants in a course that dealt with smart hospitals and building national capacity to deliver climate smart techniques, which was held in the British Virgin Islands. The course, organized by PAHO and funded by the United Kingdom Agency for International Development, drew participation from among health professionals, engineers, architects and disaster managers from several Caribbean countries. Speaking at the opening ceremony of the course, PAHO's Regional Advisor on Disaster Response, Dr. Dana Van Alphen, encouraged participants to become champions of smart facilities. The Smart Hospital Initiative started in 2011, okay. and it builds upon uh, older initiative, which is called Safe Hospitals, you may have heard of it, that started in 2005. In 2005, uh, the whole world actually adopted this Safe Hospital Initiative, which started in the Caribbean. At that time, we thought about natural hazards and the need to have safe hospitals, but climate change was not included. Climate change mitigation adaptation was not included in the safe hospital project. At that time, we saw that climate change impacted something for the future. Unfortunately, the future is here. So, uh, in 2011, with assistance from DFID, this is the UK government, we started the Smart Hospital project. And the funding allowed us to have a demonstration project in St. Vincent, Georgetown Hospital, and we'll hear later on much more about that, and in St. Kitts, uh, Coxon Hospital. Those are the two hospitals which we call Smart because they are not only resistant to natural hazards, but also environmentally friendly. Uh, we are trying to promote this initiative and the uh, Department of uh, Disaster Management in uh, DVI has been instrumental in helping us implement those projects and taking further the Smart Hospital or Health Facility Initiative because actually today we are speaking about smart schools and also about smart communities. So we do hope that DVI will be the first one to implement the smart and healthy communities. Uh, there is no specific uh, project to address this, but politicians have to be smart also. And they have to take smart decisions to see when it is uh, economically worthwhile to reduce the energy consumption and to increase the safety of um, of a health facility. Uh, we sincerely hope that uh, when you go back to your country, you will be smart champions, or champion of smart facilities, maybe, put it the other way. And that all new hospitals that will be built in the country will include the safety and the environmental friendly measures. Even hospitals that are built by friendly governments who may have other rules in their countries. But uh, in the Caribbean, we have to let them know what we need. And that is a safe hospital and a smart hospital. Speaking on behalf of the Ministry of Health and Social Development, which is the PAHO focal point in the BVI, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Irad Potter expressed a similar hope that participants will become advocates of smart hospitals. He noted that while significant gains have been made through the project spearheaded by PAHO, vulnerabilities still exist and the focus must remain on building safer and smarter health facilities to mirror the expectations of persons who want hospitals to be structurally safe and sound and environmentally friendly. For many years, the people of the Caribbean have advocated for safer hospitals and through the leadership of Pabo, we've gone a long way. In spite of this, however, we still have vulnerabilities, as is evidenced by the recent events in St. Lucia. 
etcétera, etcétera. Antes de decir para pago, we are going to think about smart hospitals. You'll have the opportunity this week to explore the Smart Hospital Initiative and the toolkit and its contents. And I employ you because one of the intent and expected outcome of this meeting is that we will derive some champions. So please, don't leave this room with any questions. Don't leave the field box site with any questions. We expect and we usually get what we want in disaster management. People who participate in disaster management tend to become very focused and champions for cause. Therefore, as Dana said, I expect that after this meeting, we will derive many champions for the cause of smart hospitals. It is important for us in the region that we consider that we consider that the dependence on fossil fuels adds significantly to our energy bills and that all of our health institutions in the main are using fossil fuels as their main source of energy. We live in a tropical paradise. And therefore, when we accept that our hospitals in particular add a lot to greenhouse emissions, we accept that there are things that can be done to minimize this. And therefore, I, I personally do expect that your presence here demonstrates your commitment and that we can eagerly await initiatives in all our territories and countries leading to smarter hospitals and eventually smart communities and smart territories and nations. As we examine the toolkit and provide, that provides a comprehensive guide to smarting hospitals, I encourage you to be sensitive to the fact that we've already committed ourselves to realizing the goal of champions. And we don't expect you to let us down. So as we move forward as partners, let us reflect on where we've come from. We've come from our expectation for Conway and Shine, our health facilities, and the providers in those facilities will be available to help us as a people after the impact of these health hazards. We've come to expect that we will constantly improve the structural safety and operations of our health facilities. And now we ask you to join the cause to ensure that our safer hospitals are more environment environmentally friendly. The four-day Smart Hospitals course included a site visit to the new Peebles Hospital, where, during an extensive tour led by Associate Director of Infrastructure at the BVI Health Services Authority, Mr. Alan Penn, they were made privy to the safety details included in the new hospital and the design and construction techniques, which are geared to make it functional and user-friendly. Though not certified as a smart hospital by PAHO, many of the features at the new facility are consistent with smart hospitals. A second site visit took participants to Cooper Island, where they were able to gain a full appreciation for the use of renewable energy and other conservation techniques, which are utilized by the Cooper Island Beach Club. These include solar panels, which provide 70% of the resort's power needs, rainwater cisterns, low-voltage LED lighting, as well as products made from recycled plastic bottles. Although we have focused solely on making large commercial-type enterprises smart, this is not merely a consideration for businesses 
or health care facilities. Homeowners, too, are encouraged to incorporate green intervention strategies in the design and construction or renovation of their homes. The methodology used by PAHO to make hospitals smart has been documented in a toolkit, which can be applied to any building. The toolkit identifies six major elements to be considered in making buildings smart. These include site design, water conservation and quality, energy and the environment, indoor environmental quality, conservation of materials and resources, and safety and compliance. The latest issue of the DDM's Disaster Digest magazine included an article titled Building Smart Structures, which was written by architect and PAHO project consultant Mr. Rani Letsam, and which provided significant details on how to make buildings smart. These include preserving environmental assets by minimizing site disturbance, while at the same time encouraging the incorporation of green space and associated ecosystems that are vital to sustaining life. Designing the project site and buildings in a manner that closely emulates the site's natural pre-development hydrological systems. Minimizing the adverse effects on the environment through optimized building siting design, material selection, and use of energy conservation measures. Providing a healthy, comfortable, and productive indoor environment for building occupants and visitors. Minimizing the use of non-renewable construction material and resources, such as energy and water, through efficient engineering, design, planning and construction, and effective recycling of construction debris. And adopting necessary measures to ensure compliance with and the implementation of health and safety components. These steps clearly outline measures that can be taken to ensure that your building is a smart building, which essentially means that it incorporates safe and green strategies to minimize its environmental footprint. Climate change is no longer an abstract scientific theory. There is tangible proof of its existence, and it has become imperative that we engage in climate change adaptation strategies that will help to reduce our vulnerability to this global phenomena. That brings us to the end of this edition of FOCUS, a program produced by the Department of Disaster Management. I am Philomena Robertson, the Information and Education Manager at the DDM. Until next time.